I'm Andrew Levine, the CEO of Coinos Group, and this is going to be our first episode of the Coinos Group podcast. We'll be using this podcast to explore a wide range of topics because as a decentralized application development platform with no barriers to entry, we expect the Coinos blockchain to touch every corner of the technology space. So we'll be using this podcast to share information about the project, interview members of the team, and interview people from other projects, not just in the blockchain space, but in the tech space more generally, because we're building Coinos to add value to any project, not just the projects that want to build themselves as decentralized or blockchain power, but who want to actually add value. The truth is that building great applications takes both decentralized and centralized databases. And so Coinos is really being designed to enable developers to integrate a decentralized database into their stack, regardless of how much or how little they want to rely on that database. In today's episode, I'll be interviewing one of my co-founders and friends, Michael Vandenberg, who's also one of the architects of the Coinos blockchain. He's going to start by telling us briefly about his background and experience, and then we're going to talk about a blockchain technology called Graphene. Coinos doesn't use Graphene. We had to build Coinos from scratch to meet our specific objectives of delivering a blockchain platform that would make it fast, easy, and affordable for developers to build truly delightful blockchain-based applications and then support the rapid growth that comes from those amazing applications. But I wanted to have this conversation about graphene because I think it provides important historical context for Coinos and insights into the very nature of smart contracts. Graphene came out around the same time as Ethereum and was actually intended as an alternative method for developing and executing smart contracts that achieved superior performance by foregoing the need for a virtual machine. I've been in this space a long time, so I've been thinking about smart contracts basically since they were invented. Not only that, but I used to be a lawyer, so I also have a deep understanding of legal contracts, which were actually the inspiration for smart contracts, and yet even I struggle with the concept, to be honest. So I know how hard it can be to wrap your mind around smart contracts, and that's one of the things I'm looking to explore in today's podcast. Part of what makes it so challenging is that it's almost impossible to even think about smart contracts outside of Ethereum's implementation, which involves writing code in a dedicated programming language, Solidity, and having that code run in a virtual machine, which if you're not familiar, is kind of like a computer running inside of another computer. While this is a very powerful approach, which Coinos will employ, I think that the additional perspective that I and the rest of the team have gotten by understanding how Graphene implements smart contracts was actually key to inspiring the innovations that will set Coinos apart and enable it to provide incredible value to developers and their end users. And so it's in this podcast episode that I, I want to lend that insight to you all. So now I'm going to hand things over to Michael Vandenberg, co-founder and blockchain architect at Coinos Group. Michael, could you start by telling us a little about your background? I I got started in blockchain working very briefly on BitShares 2.0. I was hired, uh, I think it was December of 2013 by Cryptonomics. Uh, Briefly worked on in BitShares before moving on to um, help build Steam. And Graphene was developed to be the framework that powers BitShares, and then we also used it as the, the same framework to build Steam. And so I've become an expert on, on Graphene I, over the last five years and uh, pretty know it better than probably most, most other people with the exception, I would say, of, of Theoretical who helped build BitShares 2.0, Graphene, as well as Steam and is uh, one of our developers on Coinos as well. As you know, I think uh, that our experience with Graphene had an important influence on how we think about blockchains and smart contracts. So could you explain Graphene in a bit more detail? Essentially, Graphene is just a framework to help build application-specific smart contracts. And so at its core, Graphene allows you to create blocks, 
transactions, put those transactions within blocks, and then uh, put operations within transactions. And so operations in the graphene world are the same thing as smart contracts, except that they are written directly in C++ as opposed to another smart contract language, and they are compiled in directly to the blockchain itself. And so because all this framework had existed, when we built Steam, we were able to very quickly iterate on the blockchain because blocks, transactions, the cryptography, all of those primitives that are needed to, to build a blockchain and to have one be functional, fork resolution, the P2P code, all of those things existed. And so we could just very quickly build the smart contract specific to Steam um, and just kind of slot that in, in place of the smart contracts that were specific to BitShares. Graphene enabled you to launch Steam faster than you would have otherwise been able to, but was that the reason why Graphene was built? Was that the purpose behind Graphene? Yeah, that absolutely. That was the goal of Graphene. And there was a number of other projects around the same time. It was designed from the lessons of BitShares O.X to be a replacement that would allow quick iteration of new blockchains um, over time. And this was being built at the same time um, that Ethereum was being built and about to be released. And so I think at that time it was, the question was how are we going to build um, new blockchains that look drastically different than anything else that we've seen in the past. And graphene was one such approach with the, uh, with the intent that developers would take Graphene and build new blockchains on top of it with their own unique smart contracts, potentially consensus mechanisms, add features as they wanted to and not have to worry about the underlying blockchain primitives. That they know we can build this thing and blocks will connect to one another, state will be undone if people disagree about blocks and and all these other sorts of just uh, bookkeeping tasks that you need to have in a blockchain would just be handled in the background by Graphene. The Graphene-based blockchains are known for having high performance characteristics. So this brings to mind two questions. First, where does that performance come from? Then, of course, Graphene was architected by Dan Larimer, who also created EOS, which is also known for high performance. So my second question is whether there's any connection between EOS and Graphene. EOS itself does not, no longer resembles Graphene and there's definitely Graphene uh, influence is in EOS, but it is not Graphene. And, and the reason I say that is because EOS is relying on the, the WebAssembly VM and smart contracts to define business logic. And uh, graphene chains explicitly write in C++ to define business logic. And that is primarily where the performance is going to come from. Not having to handle a VM or protect that VM allows those essentially natively implemented smart contracts to execute significantly uh, more efficiently than a smart contract based platform would. And that's why you talk about graphene in the context of application specific blockchains, as opposed to general purpose blockchains like Ethereum. When you look at the blockchain landscape and the continued dominance of Ethereum, it seems like developers have clearly spoken with respect to their preference, despite all of its many flaws. Why do you think that is? I think the best way to really think about it is historically that graphene was intended as an alternative to Ethereum, right? These were these ideas were coming, were really being being born at the same time in in blockchain history, and we 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 now in hindsight can see that the flexibility that a pure smart contract platform has far outweighs the potential performance as well as developer. Uh, I don't even know if I'd say developer friendliness of graphing. I think it was a bet that ultimately failed um, that we, in the six years since, we've realized that developers want to use 
they're native tools, and for many application developers, C++ is not that native tool. Um, and in fact, they've been much more quick to adopt Solidity as a native tool than learning C++ and having to manage a project. Uh, there, there's a lot to be said for utilizing an infrastructure that already exists via a smart contract blockchain without having to build and manage said infrastructure yourself. And graphene ultimately at the end of the day still requires the developers to manage that infrastructure, to run nodes, um, to think about a whole token economy rather than a particular use case for a singular smart contract. And as we've seen, Ethereum looks drastically different today than it did even two years ago. Now that we have the advent of DeFi, yield farming looks very different than the ICO craze of 2017, which looks very different than um, Ethereum prior to the DAO. The, the platform continues to change and evolve as the developers are uh, are iterating, are inventing, are continually trying to figure out what can blockchain do? How can we, can we come up with new business models that utilize it? And frankly, as, as innovative as graphene was, as powerful it was, as it was, it brought about some, you know, some very popular and, and influential blockchains, but those blockchains simply cannot continue to evolve and iterate like a smart contract platform can. And frankly, they, they never will with the need for coordinated hard forks, writing all the code in native C++. You know, you've got to compile it into the blockchain, distribute it to everybody, get every, you know, everyone needs to run it. It, uh, and you know, that we, we experienced that firsthand at Steam, um, working on Steam that we'd want to make changes and there's significant friction to every single change, no matter how small it is. And a lot of that doesn't need to exist in a, a blockchain that implements its business logic via smart contracts.